So as creatives, I think we've all done the thing, especially when we're younger, where we see a piece of work or see a designer's work, we get excited by it and we produce work inspired by that work. What I wanna talk about today is how do you look at older stuff and learn from it rather than simply be inspired by it, which is basically kind of a code for, I think this is really cool, so I'm gonna make stuff like this. What we wanna do is learn from the work, not necessarily learn about the work. There's a big difference between looking at something, analyzing how it works, and reading about how something works. There's value in that, but very often, if we read about something, we're, we're gonna get a bunch of historical background that has some value, but we don't learn necessarily why it works. If you read Pitchfork reviews, you're not gonna learn a lot about how music works. You're just gonna read a web of references and poetry that's like that person trying to categorize the thing. You wanna figure out how a song works, you listen to a song and you try to formulate a theory of what's happening. You do the same thing with graphic design and you're gonna make your own work better and you're gonna be developing a theory about graphic design. So today I was looking at an archive of Herb Lubalin work or Lubalin, however you say that dude's name. And I was thinking about how like lots of people go through a thing where they see that work and they flip out and then they make stuff that looks like it. But one of the things that does is you lose, not necessarily what's so good about it, but you're losing a lasting lesson there. So if you're sitting there and you, you wanna learn from the Herb Lubalin work, you've gotta look at it closely and apply your sort of critical eye to what's happening. Or one of the ones that stood out to me today is that no more war. Uh, I don't know if it's a poster or an ad or whatever, but there's a lot that's happening in that thing. But one of the biggest things is the way that no more war is locked up and there's this hard line running through these like intersections of letters. And it's between very thick letters. So it has a very kind of high gestalt you've if i was going to assume this if you went to art school you you did all that gestalt stuff in foundation 2d and then if you're like everyone else on the planet you didn't retain any of it because in a lot of ways you don't really use it because you do a bunch of exercises that are like kind of rote parlor tricks but if you go back to a lot of that stuff and then you look at something and you start to try to figure out okay like why is this working that's a big aspect of it. So start to ask yourself like on a formal level, why, why is this working for me? What's the strategy behind it? So the Lubalin stuff was obviously super influenced by historical um, wood type and calligraphy. Stuff that if you think about when he's working Luckily, he was never infected by international style or Swiss typography. Should all dank our lucky stars that that didn't happen. Because uh, his frame of reference went so much further back and he was very like unapologetically American. So his choices in typefaces and the typefaces that he would later end up making, they have their roots in this stuff that he loved. So you have like that as a strategy, which is like a passion for things. And then you have uh, another strategy is just like super thick and bold typography. That really matters. An understanding of the color of the type. So if you're a student and you're flipping out on Lubalin stuff, I actually wouldn't say don't copy it, but I would say copy it verbatim and make some personal studies where you take the stuff that you like and you try to figure out how to make exactly that because that's gonna illuminate stuff. Some of the things that to us look like traditional graphic design are actually lettering, and you can sort of tell that they're lettering because the weights of the fonts get modulated as the letters change size in a way that our illustrator in design is not gonna do. So then you sort of go like, oh, okay, the even coloration 
across a variety of sizes meant like a very kind of fine-tuned approach. But then for how to bring that into your own work, just try to analyze those strategies and what was happening. You know, like a, a huge thing for me is really boring kind of brutalist Swiss typography. There's a couple things like one is using typefaces that work really well in a kind of minimal fashion. But then the other thing is the strategy of effortlessness, like starting in the upper left corner of a composition and just working your way down or using a three column grid, not to make something look technical, but to make it look default. So those are things that are exciting to me. So I don't have to use Helvetica and a three column grid to, to get that feeling. Like I don't have to make a pastiche of the thing, but if I understand like what I'm interested in is this idea of effortlessness, that's gonna affect the types of fonts that I might use. That's gonna affect how I do a layout. Like if I'm looking at like what to me is a really utilitarian Swiss typographer versus a very technical Dutch typographer like Wim Crowell, those are two totally different approaches and they have different nuances. And if I understand the nuances, I can make work that resonates with the feeling that I get out of it without necessarily making a pastiche of Swiss typography. Hopefully I explain that in some way that resembles something of a methodology, but the basic gist of it is what's the approach, what's the technical stuff that is happening, and like how does the stylistic stuff play out? And if you do that, you can start to figure out what's really happening there that works for you. You can sort of make that part of your sensibility rather than simply seeing something, flipping out over it, and then just making work that looks like that. And I did that for a while. Like from 2006 to eight or nine, I did a lot of stuff that was this like kind of hardcore, brutalist, kind of Swiss approach to things. Cause I saw Swiss typography uh, in a new light and I saw Peter Savile's work and I kind of flipped out. I didn't make actual pastiches, but I definitely kind of approached the work like that. I don't know that that made me a better designer. Like I did more work so I got better, but if I had kind of cooled out a little bit and said like, okay, what about this is appealing to me? I think I could have made work that had a little bit more myself in it and wasn't so specifically like the result of my influences. I hope that that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them. Motorcycle Man has said his piece. Thanks.